$705,000 for a shotgun? What's up guys, my name is Colton Kerr, and my family has been duck hunting for three generations now. We also own Cypress Crossing Guide Service, where we do lodging meals, morning duck hunts, afternoon speck hunts, and even some snow goose hunts. It has been a lifelong journey for me, and every winter, it has been spent in a duck blind. I've had a lot of experience in the duck blind, lots of success, and lots of failures too. So today, as you're getting started duck hunting, I'm gonna share five things with you that you will absolutely need to go duck hunting. The number one thing at the top of my list whenever I'm getting ready to go duck hunting that I do not want to forget is my shotgun. Now there's many ways that you could take down waterfowl. I guess you could shoot a slingshot or you could shoot a bow and arrow but the most effective way to take down waterfowl is with a shotgun. Now there's lots of options out there for shotguns. I was just looking a moment ago at the most expensive shotgun ever sold and it was $705,000. Now do you need a $705,000 shotgun to go shoot some ducks? Absolutely not. This right here is my old faithful. It is a Remington 870. It may be rusted and it might be beat up because I have been shooting it for the past 12 years pretty much every single day of duck and goose season. Uh, but it still gets the job done. You do not have to spend a lot of money on a shotgun. You can go to your local pawn shop and buy a used one. Maybe if you're just getting started and you're just wanting to try it out, borrow a shotgun from somebody. This 870 is a pump, so I have to manually move the chamber open and close to eject and reload another shell into the shotgun. Now there is other options. This year I did pick up a Winchester XS4 and it is a auto reloader. Whenever you load the gun and you pull the trigger, it will automatically eject that shell and reload another shell for you. It makes for an awesome shooting experience, but you do not have to have this. Now, whenever you talk about shotguns, you will need shotgun shells. I shoot Winchester three inch number twos. It is on the cheaper range of shotgun shells and you can spend lots of money on shotgun shells, but do not be scared by the cheaper range of shells. Uh, I've had a lot of successful hunts with my good old experts right here. Before you go on your first hunt, make sure you clean your gun, make sure it's in working order, especially if you borrow the gun or you just recently bought a gun. Definitely make sure that the gun is in safe working order before your first hunt. My number two thing is going to have to be waders. Now, whenever you think about duck hunting, duck hunting revolves around water. Now there is options to hunt ducks and waterfowl on dry ground, but the majority of our hunting here in Arkansas is done over water. So whenever you're thinking about that, you will need some type of protection from the water, especially if you're gonna be standing in it in 30 degree weather. Again, there is lots of options for waders. You can spend as much as $1,000 on Sika waders, or this year I actually wore a pair of high and dry waders that were only $300. The high and dry waders that I wore were a breathable wader. So a very thin material up top and then a very well insulated boot to keep my feet warm. With the waders not being insulated, at my body portion, I had the option of how many layers I wanted to put on, whether it was cold weather or a little bit warmer weather. I would highly suggest the high and dry waders for you beginner guys. They are a very reasonable waiter and they did last me a complete full season, which is usually unheard of for me since I go every single day and treat them like complete crap. 
Now that we have the means of you taking down the duck and you staying protected out there in that cold freezing water, let's talk about how to get the duck to come to you. <laughs> So my number third thing is a duck call. Duck calls are a great tool to talk to the ducks and convince them to come to where you're at so they can get in the gun range and you can take a clean shot on them. Shoot them. Boom, baby. The call I use is a DC Mondo. This is what I primarily call and then I also have a DC Mondo LA as my backup. Now these are amazing calls. They're actually cut down style calls, so they are very loud and raspy. Now there's other calls that are very loud but crisp and clean. It's really all the style and what you're comfortable calling. I will say that the cut down style calls are very unique sound and they are the most realistic whenever you get loud, in my opinion. This would be a loud, crisp sounding call. It just has a lot cleaner call. Now it is about the same price as my cut down calls. Now this is another very loud, crisp sounding duck call that probably only costs about $10. Now you can go get duck calls from five to $150. Now there's other calls that are very customized. And we're giving this one away on my Instagram, by the way. Get something that sounds really good whenever you're blowing it. Go in somewhere like Max Prey Wings or your local duck call maker and see if they'll let you call some of their calls and let them give you a few tips of getting a quack down or maybe a feed call and then see what you sound the best on that sounds most like a duck to you. Get comfortable with that call and as you learn things, then you can move up and get into more advanced calls. My number four thing for you is going to be decoys. Now you might ask, why did I put duck calls before decoys? And that's because whenever you have a duck call, you're able to talk to them and tell them that there is ducks over there. And especially if you're in the timber, you're able to kick the water and get some water movement. And they are convinced that there is some birds down there because of that water rippling effect. But of course, if you're able to spend some money and get some decoys, definitely do so and it will add to your experience. Now these are the decoys that we use. They are very realistic. They are tangle free decoys, the Flight Mallard series. These are floaters. There's also full bodies if you're hunting dry ground. There's lots of varieties of decoys. Every species that you could imagine they make decoys of and there's lots of companies making them. Do not fear away from some of the cheaper versions of decoys. If you're a beginner and you're just getting out there and see if you really want to do this or not, don't fear away from those cheaper versions of decoys. I promise you as long as you keep them in nice bags where they don't get scratched up, they will do the job for you. Now if you're more of an advanced hunter, definitely look at something that is very realistic. Check out the painting schemes on them check out the contours in the decoys and see how realistic it makes them look. Look up some pictures of some ducks swimming around on the water before you buy some decoys. I will tell you these tangle free decoys have held up really well for us. We have been using these for almost four, this will be our fourth season that's coming up and they have held up really well. You can see there's very minimum paint chipping and I know this is only one of the 2000 decoys we have but they all pretty much look like this. They have held up really well for the use and abuse that we put them through every single day of duck season. And whenever you start to think about how many to get, you know, if you're just starting out, just get a dozen or two dozen, and that will be plenty. And I'm about to show you something that will really add to that smaller spread and bring some realism to it without any money at all. This here is what we call a jerk cord. So we just took some old mojo poles, but you could do this with any pole. And we made a way that we could wrap the string around the poles. 
and then we put a bungee cord on the pole end of the string. So we unwrap this, pull it across our spread, pull this handle back to where we're gonna be standing or the blind that we're gonna be sitting in. We tie some decoys to this line and we jerk on this. And that's the reason why it's called a jerk cord. And whenever you do that, the decoys will move and create a ripple on the water. Just like earlier, I was talking about kicking the water and creating that ripple. Now you have a cord running through your decoys uh, that will make that motion out there where the decoys are, where the ducks are gonna be looking at that spread. Now there's, of course, you can pull on this really hard or you can just give just little bitty jerks just to give them a little bit of movement. Uh, it really all depends on how the ducks are working that day of how hard you wanna pull this and how much you wanna pull it. I will say on a non-windy day, you will definitely want a jerk cord in your decoy spread to add some realism because it will be dead calm out there. Now, if you have some good wind and good ripple on your decoys, you might not even need a jerk cord. Now, my number five thing might sound a little bit odd at the end, but I'm taking in consideration that you get all of these items that you will be trying some more challenging hunts. So my number five thing is going to be lights. Whenever you're going duck hunting, you will start your day in the pitch black dark. You want to be there and set up before sun up. Usually the first hour of light of the day is whenever you're gonna see most waterfowl moving, depending on the weather. Now, depending on how far you're walking or how you're getting to your spot and how much gear you're putting out, you, know, you take into consideration what kind of light you're gonna need. Like there's a simple headlamp, for somebody that might be walking long distance and doesn't want to carry a handheld light. Then for somebody that might be using a boat to get to their location, of course you have larger Q-beams that would shine a further distance so you can see at a high rate of speed. My personal favorite light this year has been the headlamp from Bent Oak Outdoors. It is a little bit of everything. So you have a low beam red light. You also have a low beam white light. Then you have a very bright spotlight. Now we use rangers to get to our location. So before having this headlamp, I was really just dependent on the ranger headlights or LED light bars that we had on the ranger to light up whatever I was trying to do in the morning. After I got this headlamp, uh, it really allowed me to be able to move all the way out into the spread and have really good light to see exactly what I was doing and exactly where I was putting my decoys. I was also able to walk through our timber hands-free with a very bright light on my head. So this is an amazing light and I would highly suggest you guys that are looking to up your experience and get some better gear. This headlamp from Bent Oak Outdoors is a great buy. I would definitely recommend it. One more thing with your light, always keep a compass with you. Obviously you're using a light to see around, but if you get out in the woods, you can only see as far as the light and you can only see as far as you can see during the day. Definitely always have a compass with you because no matter how many gadgets and GPS's and phones that we have to tell us where we're at, they can fail. You're gonna be in places that might not have great cell phone service. Always have an idea of where you're at and what direction is out and have a compass with you. Now I said that there was five things, but I'm gonna add one more thing in there. And that's friends and family. As you start your duck hunting journey, or if you're already duck hunting and you're only going by yourself, definitely take some friends and family along with you or find some new friends that are already hunting that you can learn from them. There's been so many memories made of me hunting with my father and my grandfather and all of my other family members, as well as my friends. And that is probably more important to me than anything. Not the number of ducks we kill, but the time we have while we're out there. Of course, this list might seem very simple 
once you start looking online at all the things that people use to go duck hunting. But of course later on you could add a dog, you could add a boat, you could add a ranger. Things that make your hunting experience easier and better. But if you're just getting started hunting and you just want to get by to see if you really like it and you want to continue it, these are the things that I would first suggest you get. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you learned anything from this video today, please hit that like button, comment down below, and also subscribe. I'm so excited to be back here on YouTube, and I have a lot of ideas for this channel. Lots more tips and tricks videos, as well as some vlog style videos of me traveling around with a few guys to do some different style of hunting and maybe even fishing. But until then, y'all stay safe out there, enjoy life, dream big, and we'll see you on the next one. Shoot that duck. Ah. Oh, man.